Welcome to Couples Therapy in Seven Words. I'm your co-host, Judy Alexander, and I'm here with my husband, Dr. Bruce Tolmer. Hello, Judy. Hello, viewers and listeners. Judy, tell folks the title of our topic today. My husband cross-dresses, lost his job, and complains about my cleaning. Wow, what a <laughs> smorgasbord of problems we are dealing with today. So, but you know what? Let's, let's do our little intro stuff where we... Uh, you know, make a few announcements okay. and tout some of our great stuff we okay. have to offer. And then we'll get into this particular uh, topic or set of topics, as the case may be. So I want to, before I forget, I want to mention some upcoming presentations. Now, we are recording this. What is today's date? October, October 6th, 6th, 2023. Uh, we don't know when you're going to be actually viewing this or, or hearing it. Uh, you know, this stays on the website. You may be hearing this several years later. But if you happen to be hearing this sometime around when we're doing it, we have some upcoming presentations that we would like you to know about in case you happen to be around any of these areas. So let me see if I can do them all. I should have had the list, of course, that out. Would be but I think I know them in my so. crack memory. Um, the first one is on October 15th, uh, right. coming up just in a, a little over a week from when we're doing this, a Sunday. These are all on Sundays. October 15th, and that will be at Ohavi Tzedek Synagogue in Burlington, Vermont, and it will be at 10 in the morning. Uh, we are doing a um, presentation. All of these are the same presentation. We're doing a presentation called Jewish Perspectives of, on Sex, Jewish Perspectives on Sex, Sacred Sex, and Sexual Midrash. It is a presentation where I have part of it and Judy has part of it, and of course we're in it together. And... Um, we think it's really going to be fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, so do the folks who are sponsoring this. So Ohavi Tzedek Synagogue uh, in Burlington, October Vermont, 15th. October 15th right. at 10 o'clock. Then on October 29th uh, at Beth Jacob Synagogue in Montpelier, Vermont. Uh, we are doing the same presentation. That one will be at also at, uh, at 10 in the morning. At 10 also. Yes. Uh, and we are doing one in... Um, in Temple Temple Sinai, which is our home synagogue, Temple Sinai in South Burlington, Vermont, on November nineteenth, uh, same thing, and that one is at that one's in the afternoon, I think, at uh, twelve thirty, I believe. Anyway, and then there's one more we'll talk about, which is in Florida, uh, in Ormond Beach, Florida, and that one will be on February twenty fifth, twenty twenty four. Uh, and that's being sponsored by the Jewish Federation of Volusia and Flagler Counties. And so that could draw a rather mm -hmm. large crowd, we're hopeful. Um, so if you're anywhere near any of those places, you can find them. Now, I, well, I'm not expecting people who are taking notes just now. If you want to find more information about that, if you go to my website, brucechalmer.com, and mm -hmm. go to the tab where it has presentations, look around for it, you'll see it. It's like you know books and more. Um, there, I have a website that has all of this stuff there. You can find it there. So check that out, please. And can they also get it at ctn7.com? They will be able to do so after this because I'm going to put it up there. So okay. by golly, by the time you're seeing this, I sure hope you'll be able to get that same information at ctn7.com. I'll put a link to that very page. Our right website where you can get all the information you need about our podcasts, about our merch, and I was going to say, what else can you get there? <laughs> merch. <laughs> you can get merch. Here are our, our um, beautiful mugs. Merch. We got mugs. We got tote bags. We got, got t-shirts. Yep. So you can get above. merch. You could get Bruce's books. You can get my books through there as well. Yes, you can. Uh, and you know what? Go there and you'll find out all about my books, uh, Reigniting the Spark, and also It's Not About Communication. And uh, I've got, uh, if you sign up for my website, and not for my website, I keep newsletter. saying Newsletter. My newsletter. Sign up for my newsletter. It's a roughly a monthly newsletter. And uh, you can do that through ctn7.com as well. And you will get a free PDF of the book that Judy is reaching for as we speak. There it is. Seven Words to Jumpstart Your Love Life. Yes, indeed. And so you can check that out as well. Uh, and... Let us also put in, well, let me let me say a little more for a moment here. Of, this will segue nicely into our sponsor. Um, say a little more about the presentation we are doing. Sure. Because the presentation we are doing, as I mentioned briefly, it's the, there's the part that I'm doing, which is a lot of this, the ideas I talk about in terms of where does intimacy fit into a relationship? Why is it important? Where does sex fit into intimacy? 
I'm also going to talk about specifically about some Jewish perspectives on sex from Torah, Talmud, rabbinic sources. And the second part of the presentation is going to be you. Why don't you talk about what you're going to be talking about? All right. We've been um, sponsoring this book called The Blue Tent, Erotic Tales from the Bible by Laria Zilber. And, um, well, let's just say Laria and I have a very special connection. You do. And in fact, we've determined actually in our presentation, we couldn't get Laria to be available, uh, oddly enough, at the same time you're there. But what we do have is a couple of uh, short videos of Laria that we'll be including in the presentation. Right. <coughs> Pseudonym. <Yeah>. Pseudonym. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, yes. Anyway. You have to do so, something about that. Cool. Yes, right. So the second part of the presentation um, that I'll be doing on sexual midrash is uh, how stories in the Bible um, and just uh, stories of, uh, how shall I say it? I'm not sure. What are you trying to say? I'm not sure what I'm trying to say <laughs> either. Anyway, if you can make the presentations, come and see it. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you're interested in acquiring that book by Laria, go to lariazilber.com. You will. Uh, those of you watching this will see a uh, QR code for that floating nearby our heads <laughs> as you're watching this. If you're um, if you're hearing this, uh, go to lariazilber.com, or you can find a link to that also. You can also go to Amazon. Where you can go to Amazon and just paperback, search for it. Right. Audio book and Kindle. Absolutely. As are all your books, by the way. They all are, indeed. In all formats. All formats, absolutely. Yeah, so you, if you're going out for your jog or on the treadmill or just cooking and want to listen to interesting uh, audible books. They are available. You're, you're um, narrating your own books, and I am yep. narrating The Blue Tent. You are narrating <coughs> Larry's Pseudonym. book. Yeah, yeah, pseudonym. <laughs> pseudonym. Yeah. Pseudonym. Right. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> See, that's good. You might have this sort of little allergy thing going when you're... You know, you know. I think I do. Yeah. Well, I'm in a good mood. You know why? Why are you in a good mood? Well, for those of you who uh, are Jewish or know a lot of Jewish people, you'll know that it's the coming to the end of the holiday of Sukkot, the Festival of Booths, and we're about to celebrate Simchat Torah, Rejoicing in the Torah, mm -hmm. where we celebrate because we finish reading the Torah and we're so happy that we finish, but we're even happier that we get to start it all over again. In fact, yeah, we happen to be, here's a, here's a little trivia point for you, we happen to be recording this on a day that has a special name, it's Hoshana Rabbah. That's right. Uh, the, the day of the great Hoshana. Uh, or this Hosanna, is if Hosanna, you don't understand yes. Hebrew. Uh, this is uh, the day before Shemini Yatzeret, which is in Israel celebrated together with Simchat Torah, mm -hmm. and uh, in the diaspora it's often celebrated Simchat Torah the day after Shemini Yatzeret. But indeed, this is, you know, they in Hebrew we refer to this season as the Zman Simchatena, the season of our rejoicing. That's right. So we've been doing a lot of rejoicing. We had have had a lot of friends over to our sukkah. That is the temporary booth that some Jews construct during the holiday mm -hmm. for seven and eight days uh, or longer. Keep it up a little longer. And, yeah, the uh, um, commandment is really to sleep in your sukkah, which works out well if you're in Israel because it's a bit warmer, although we've been having a really hot October. It has been amazing this we, year. <laughs> we could have slept in our grandkids slept in their sukkah. Our grandkids <laughs> slept in their sukkah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it has been warm, but uh, I choose not to sleep in the sukkah. Yes, <laughs> Let's just indeed. Say. So we did eat a lot of meals in the sukkah. We did indeed, yes, indeed. So, so let's get on to our show. Let's, let's well, let's get on to our topic. And it, it's, it's you know it's funny you mentioned that sense of joy mm -hmm. leading into it because I think that's a nice backdrop for this. Yeah. Uh, I should explain. Well, so why don't you say the say the title again in case yes. people forgot from a few minutes ago? <laughs> I think I forgot. <laughs> my husband cross dresses, lost his job, and complains about my cleaning. Yeah. Now why? Ever. This was my idea. I will claim credit or blame, as the <laughs> yes, case may be, for this you're, idea. You're the namer of the episodes. Of this, yeah, usually. And so this one was my idea. Why did I pick this particular topic out? Well, because when you, you, know, when you have a website, mm -hmm. as we do, and you get these analytics mm -hmm. you know, about like who's, how, where are people finding this website, there are three big, like n many, many people every month are mm -hmm. finding our website looking for information about a situation where a wife discovers her husband is cross-dressing right or a wife discovers her husband has lost a job and she's upset about it mm -hmm. or 
a wife finds that her husband keeps complaining about her cleaning. Mm -hmm. These are three topics that are really big mm -hmm. in terms of people finding our site because we've had podcasts where we've touched on each one of those things. Right. So right. here we are, and I'm thinking, well, you know what? We just recently got some more comments mm -hmm. on one of our podcasts about the cross-dressing thing. It would be nice to, to bring those together and talk about them because there is something I claim in common about all of those phenomena. And now again, I want to be fairly specific about the phenomenon I'm referring to. Okay. The phenomenon is, let's let's assume heterosexual couples here. Mm -hmm. Phenomenon is a woman is writing or is, is doing a search on the web, right. worried about one of these three things mm -hmm. with respect to her husband. Mm -hmm. And the thing, well, I'll play the game with you. Can you, can you guess what's in common what, what's in common about all these three things that, from a, a therapist, a couple therapist perspective, well, what am I thinking? <laughs> Here, read my mind, honey. Go ahead. Well, I'm trying to think because the first two, he's keeping a secret. Mm -hmm. The third one, he's nagging. I mean, it's not necessarily keeping a secret that he lost his job. It's, like, it's not like he lost a job and didn't tell her. It's just he lost his job and she's fed up with it. Um, he lost another job, you know, um, so that kind of thing. No, I, I, I don't look, get it. Okay, I wasn't looking at it for that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of answers uh, to my question, of course. So, looking at it for that from that perspective, then I would say, yeah, that uh, there's a cataclysmic something that's going on, mm -hmm. um, especially with the first two, and the third one about complaints about the cleaning. It's just one more naggy thing. Yeah. And, again, the, the part I want to stress about the context here, mm -hmm. she's doing a web search about it. Yes. It's not merely that these things are happening. That's mm -hmm. difficult enough. She's doing a web search about it. What does that imply to me as a couples therapist that says they can't talk about it effectively? Yeah. They're not able to handle this. And, yeah, it's obviously yeah. an area of friction. Yeah, it's and moreover, friction. not only can they not talk about it effectively, she's not searching for a couples therapist. She's searching for information about these issues that she's having trouble with her husband with. She's not saying, oh, gee, we should go to a couples therapist about this. We're having trouble mm -hmm. talking about it, which, of course, <laughs> couples therapist over here is thinking, well, of course, that's what you should do. She's searching for these things because she doesn't, that doesn't seem available to her. Maybe mm -hmm. she hasn't thought of it. I kind of doubt she hasn't thought of it, but maybe it's not available. She doesn't seem like her husband would agree to it. Yeah. All of those things are possible in all of these. They're all painful issues. And it's reflecting the fact that they don't know how to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So, yes, so uh, that, well, that's why they make self-help books, right? So that, that is why that they make self-help books. That will give people the language and Absolutely. clarity to get a little bit more of an objective view of your situation. Yeah, and look, let's say that's also why we make this podcast. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? This, you can learn from this podcast and as we've discovered from other folks when we've done, you know, not just fairly recently, we had one talking about a very different issue. Mm -hmm. But the person who uh, had written the original question talked about how helpful it was to hear us talking about it. Right. You know, respectfully, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and she and her husband sat down and, and, you know, listened to our podcast and went over it several times and found it a very helpful thing to do. So that actually facilitated their talking right. about it, which was really kind of cool. Yeah. So I will note at the outset here, if this facilitates some people talking about this stuff, then we've done a good thing just by that. And I will also note, again, the obvious, if this also facilitates their, you know, if the conversation that this facilitates also leads to saying, wow, you know, we could use the assistance of a good couples therapist, that's a good thing too. Mm-hmm. So all of those things are true. But let's let's talk about each one of these things um, in terms of the, the particulars of it, because they all they all come up. And we're going to start with the cross-dressing one. And partly what stimulated that was uh, one of the podcasts we did on that, uh, we've received a number of comments on. Mm -hmm. And a couple of the comments just came in within the last week. Right. So uh, it was that kind of jogged my my thought and said, gee, this would be good for us to talk about. So what I want to suggest is, why don't you read, I, I pulled out three comments. Okay. Uh, one of which we actually did another podcast on, but I want to invite you to read that again anyway. Okay. And then the other two are the recent ones, and then we'll, we'll talk about them. Okay. So we got this uh, from Shad. Right, Shad writes, As a wife, you articulated a lot of what I'm feeling right now so well. Something not touched on though was that you feel so alone 
and that you can't talk to anyone because how bloody embarrassing and it's not really my secret to share, is it? My husband has been wearing women's thongs and shaving his body hair, which is a huge turnoff, for a few years now. He started wearing the odd women's track pants and sweaters along the way, then girly socks. A couple of days ago, I found that he is trying to grow breasts with herbal supplements. That was a huge slap in the face for me. Like, wow, he's just going to keep getting worse and there is no way I'm ever going to be able to be attracted to him again. The struggle is where to go from here. It's a scary place. Mm, yeah. And I, I mentioned we actually did a podcast in response to right. uh, this one. And so I'll invite people to find that. I, I don't remember what number it was, but mm -hmm. it was sometime in the last year or so. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's check out the more recent um, the more recent uh, comments, and I just want to just by way of uh, setting the context. So that was a comment. Shad was a a wife who discovered her husband cross dressing, right? And found that was very difficult for her in terms of you know her her sense of wanting to be in a heterosexual relationship. Mm -hmm. Here is another one from RC. Okay, RC writes, great video. It's such a hard situation. I was found out a few years ago. We are still married. My wife doesn't like it, but she knows it is part of me since age four, and she allows it a couple of times a month when she is out of town or working on a Saturday. Stopping only makes me miserable, and she loves me and wants me to be happy, but doesn't want to see me dressed up or participate in any way. Yeah, yeah. So there's one from the man. Yeah who was the one who was doing the cross-dressing, and his wife, you know, he said, I was found out a few years ago. Right. So he hadn't told her. Right. Uh, they, she didn't know it up front. Mm -hmm. But she found out there, and he's talking about how they're trying to accommodate it. And then most recently, here's the comment we got just a, a few days ago. Terry writes, I can tell you from personal experience, this is not a choice. Transgender picks you. You don't pick being transgender. It is not like cheating on your partner where you can make a rational choice and walk away from it. Also, it will never just go away. Most cross-dressers will eventually want to become female. My female partner was totally not supportive when I told her. She was demeaning and hurtful and almost drove me to suicide. I feel the real problem here is with the wife. Cis women should try to understand that if they really love the other person, they shouldn't condemn or humiliate them. If the wife can't try to understand and accept, then move on and end the relationship. It is not going to go away, believe me. Transgender people like myself have a choice. Live alone in stealth or find other like-minded people to spend your life with. Mm, yeah, yeah. So that's, of course, a very different perspective mm -hmm. coming from someone who is, uh, again, he, he was the was the man. I don't know. Uh, I didn't, we don't, I don't have any other information about Terry than this. Right. And, and Terry's a pseudonym. I just picked one, deliberately picked one that was sort of gender neutral right. because I don't know how Terry identifies. Um, but it was an interesting um, thing. I'm going to say he because of the, the, the name that I changed was a male name, so I'm, I'm going to use he. Didn't, well, when it didn't says say that, which pronouns to that use. The, the female partner was not totally supportive, so I'm thinking that Terry started out male. Oh, that, that's and clearly Terry started male. And wants, and I just don't know which I don't know which pronouns Terry prefers now. Oh, okay. It doesn't seem like. Anyway, I'm going to use he because that's there. There was some other reason to think it's he. I could be wrong about that. Apologies to Terry if I'm wrong about that. Should we use they? That. Why don't we use that? Yeah, good point. Yeah, we'll make it make it easier. So, in any case, Terry was the one who was found cross-dressing. Mm -hmm. Terry's wife did not like this, Correct. clearly. And a couple of things here. First of all, the point that Terry made about, you know, she was demeaning and hurtful and almost drove me to suicide. Mm -hmm. Clearly, being demeaning and hurtful is problematic no matter what. Uh, and so... I want to come back to that in just a second because I have a, a story that I, I think I mentioned this couple before that I was so impressed with. There was such a different a different story of this mm. just to offer by way of saying there's another possibility. Okay. Terry does say something that I actually am going to quibble with um, where it says, um, where did they say it? Most cross-dressers will eventually want to become female. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe the data supports that. 
No, I don't claim expertise here, so mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not uh, claiming that that's true. Uh, I did do some research just to check and see what you know. What are the what are people saying about right. this in terms of quoting research? And the phenomenon of cross dressing is so common, and it is so common among men who are who identify as heterosexual, mm -hmm. interested in having sex with women, not at all interested in transitioning to becoming female. It is very very common among such men. So that says, no, it isn't necessarily the case that most men who cross-dress want to become female. Mm -hmm. Having said that, then there are, of course, many, many, many others, right, who of do. whom Terry is one, who do. Right. So as usual, this is it turns out to be complicated. <laughs> and, oh, I was saying, don't get me started, but by, by golly, get me started. Okay, we got there, you there started. We go go yes. ahead. It's fascinating to me when you look at the phenomena there's this this happens in so many different phenomena where there is a an oppressed minority. Now look, we're Jews. We know something about being an oppressed minority. We also know something about not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know what? It turns out to be complicated. The there's a, there's a lot of issues about the notion of anti-racism that okay. happen to be a lot in the news these days. I won't get into the details of it, but that concept of racism being a serious and difficult phenomenon, of course, is true. And the concept of anti-racism is an interesting set of ideas. When it is turned into a lens that asserts that it's the only possible valid lens to view situations, that, to use the technical term, is bullshit. And what it does is it denies complication. Mm -hmm. And people who deny complication turn out to be dangerous. Ideology. I read it. I have two chapters about this yes, in, you do. in my Very recent book. Very interesting read. Too. I, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I think so. I think so. I think it's an interesting set of ideas. Uh -huh. I don't claim they're the only ideas. No. no. <laughs> um, that ideology is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Ideas open you up. Mm -hmm. Ideas make you think. Ideas invite you to recognize complications. Ideologies shut all that down. There's, they're attractive for a reason. Yes, because it's scary to open up to other possibilities exactly. that go yeah. against your beliefs that you had growing up, and then it makes you question everything that you thought. Exactly, and the phenomena, and this happens, name, name a controversial topic, abortion. That's one of my mm -hmm. favorite ones to mention in this context. Mm. Abortion, it is so easy for people on, you know, it, let's, let's talk polarized, okay? People are either pro-choice or pro-life. Mm -hmm. Both of those terms designed to demean the other, by mm -hmm. the way. Pro-life is designed to imply that people are against it are anti-life. Mm -hmm. Pro-choice is designed to say that people are against it are anti-choice. Mm -hmm. they, they are intentionally demeaning terms. As soon as you do that, you have basically shut down any possibility of any sort of interesting conversation. And the phenomenon that I always love to point out is each side easily can cite stories that supports the fact that the other side is causing evil. Mm -hmm. Because such stories are easily available. Yeah. They all exist. Yeah. And so what does that mean? That means, you know what? Any rule you come up with is not going to be perfect. Well, the problem yeah. is also you can't, you can't have a world where everybody thinks the same. Well, you're not going to have a world. <laughs> you shouldn't have a world where everybody thinks the same. But even that... Okay, so what do you do about, well, this is the, the notion of the idea of politics. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I've, I've mentioned this little factoid before. You know what the word politics comes from? Uh, polity. Well, polity is from the same root. Uh, polis. City. City. Polis is the Greek word for yeah. city. Yeah, it's what you have to deal with in a city. What is a city as opposed to a village? It's a place where a bunch of people come from that all came from different places. Right. So you have a bunch of diverse people in a city. Mm -hmm many of whom think differently, have different values, have different priorities, have different things they think are good and evil. I mean, all of the above. And you have to find some way of living together and sharing power yeah. among a bunch of people who don't all think the same. Mm -hmm. That's what politics is about. It's, an, it's, a, it's a calling. It's an important thing to be able to do. And when you get ideology coming in, yeah. all that what that leads to is horrible, horrible things. You know, genocide is the result of saying you you simply mustn't be that kind of person. Right. And and uh, you know all sorts of name name your favorite evils. Yeah. And they all result, I claim, from a, a closing down to ideology. Mm -hmm. And so this happens in the domain of pretty much anything. Now I want to mention the issue of being of. Trans, all the issues in terms of being trans. Okay. Take a, a set of people, a, you know, a group of people who have been horrendously oppressed mm -hmm. for 
as long as you can imagine, differently in different cultures, you know, whatever. And what you have is a complicated situation because the oppression is horrible. And so what people tend to do who are trying to reverse the oppression mm -hmm. is they will get often very, very ideological, black sure. and white. Look what happened to J.K. Rowling when she said, now again, I'm, I don't, I better not try and paraphrase it. I don't remember exactly what she said. This is my, this is what, this is what I'm remembering. You know, I may be misremembering. But basically, she was saying things along the lines that say, a trans woman is not the same thing as a woman from birth. Mm -hmm. That's what she was saying. She wasn't saying there's no such thing as trans women, the trans women should be oppressed, the trans women shouldn't have rights. No, of course not. She was saying there is a difference which sometimes becomes significant. Mm -hmm. The issue of girls' sports is a great example of this. Yes. The, to claim, you know, what, what we have, you can, you can see it happen. If somebody were to claim, were to say, you know, we have an interesting and complicated situation here because someone who grew up in, in, a, in a male body mm -hmm. and transitions yeah. has some physical advantages vis-a-vis -vis someone who grew up in a female body and didn't transition. And that kind of messes up the fairness of sports. It Isn't does. that interesting? Yeah. And as soon as somebody says that, they're going to get fired from their job in right. academia. Uh, yeah. I'm... As opposed to simply saying, boy, this is complicated, isn't it? Boy, that's a tough one. What do you do? You know, what would somebody do with their trans daughter, you know, mm -hmm. someone who had transitioned and wants to participate in, in swimming? And if, you know, if she participates with the girls, she's, you know, there, there are examples of this, you know, she's got this ridiculous advantage because she's got much more upper body strength right. from having been a boy. Right. And... But if she participates with boys, then that's she's got a disadvantage then. And also, it's it's kind of icky because she doesn't want to hang out in a boy's locker room sure. you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? It's complicated. I don't have a solution for that. But the solution for that is not to assume that anybody who raises that question is automatically anti-trans, which is McCarthyism, my friends. That's what that is. Yeah. And McCarthyism is bad from whichever side does it. Yeah. It's an ideology. The problem is the ideology. The problem isn't the ideas. The problem is the ideology. It's complicated. Oh, my God, I hear this with respect to Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, the folks who will just insist that this is simple and it's all Israel's all bad. They're anti-Semites. They don't want to be called anti-Semites. Is that an ideological statement on my part? Probably. I don't know. But excuse me, folks. It turns out to be complicated where you have these situations where you have people who have these long standing grievances. It's almost certain that they all have good reason for the damn grievances. Yes, and uh, I don't think we know enough of each other's history. Yeah. I think that's a lot of people are happy to shout, you're oppressing, you're oppressing, you know, this one's oppressing. Yeah. But look at look at the histories. Yeah. Well, and history is yeah. Yes. Yes, because, uh, you know, each side has a different story yeah. and legitimate. The, that's the point. And the, look, this it, our seven words, be kind, don't panic, and have faith. Mm -hmm. When I say have faith, implicit in that is everybody's stories are valid on some level. Mm -hmm. They're not all exclusively true. Yeah. And look, every country on earth has way. been conquered by somebody at some point. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, unfortunately, that's the way that history has gone. Yeah. And, and that well, that doesn't mean we ignore that. It also doesn't mean that it's simple. No. It just isn't simple. Mm -hmm. It turns out not to be simple. So, oh, oh, my God, affirmative action. It turns out not to be simple. Isn't that fascinating? You know, the Supreme Court just ended affirmative action yeah. in college admissions, at least based specifically based on race. And look, don't listen to me. I was not affected by that. I didn't realize that. the show was going to be so political. I didn't either, but... <laughs> Here we go. And this is all taking off from that one statement that Terry, Terry made, which I really appreciate, by the way, Terry, I really appreciate your comment, that one statement that Terry made that asserting something that I'm claiming happens not to be accurate, mm -hmm. but it's coming from a place in Terry that really makes a lot of sense. I, look, let me go back to that before I get too far off okay. field, before I get totally off the, the point. I really want to express some appreciation for Terry's comment, because what Terry said is it is reflecting this deeply painful experience that they're having, right. which is that sense that, you know, there they were saying, this wasn't something I chose. Mm -hmm. And it's it messed up their marriage, or yeah. I guess female partner, didn't say it was wife, but whatever, messed up their marriage or yeah. messed up their partnership. And in ways that were, you know, what they were getting from the female partner mm -hmm. was 
awful, mm-hmm. you know, according to Terry. Yeah. And so that's, well, the, the, that's the where that pain is coming from. The surprise and the from. hurt that, yeah. uh, that, that Terry inflicted on their female partner. Yeah. It's no wonder, you know, you're, it's shocking. I'm well, sorry, the, you know, the, it's, it's shocking. Yes. If I fa- suddenly found out that I was married to somebody who, you know, was doing this all these mm-hmm. years, well, first that's, you know, I, I, I feel, I would feel, well, actually, I'd feel very sorry for you. I'd feel bad. <laughs> ah, so, thank you. Uh, first, I realize it's hypothetical. I'm not, I don't do that. Yeah. But no, that, thank you for that, because that, I, I want to mention that couple that I said I would allude to, you know, yeah. because the, here's a, here's a counter story to that experience of humiliation that Terry had to go through, which is a couple that I worked with a couple of years ago where the man, and he wasn't said he wasn't transitioning, so definitely definitely was a he. Mm-hmm. The man, uh, but he was very much into cross-dressing, mm-hmm. and it, was, it had been compelling for him since childhood, very similar story. And his wife didn't find out about it until, this was a couple when I was working with them, they'd been together 30 plus years, I think, 35 years, something like that. You know, they were, they were uh, in their 60s. And so he more and more had this this deep feeling that he wanted to express himself dressed as a woman Mm -hmm. and wanted to do that in public. He had never done it in public and wanted his wife to experience that. And, you know, not unlike the the previous comment of the man who wrote in and said his, you know, his wife tolerated but didn't like it, you Mm -hmm. know. And what was so fascinating about this couple is very similar to what you were just imagining, you know, because, you know, first you're thinking how shocked and hurt mm-hmm. and, and angry, right? Mm-hmm. From the, you didn't say angry, but I'm imagining from mm-hmm. being deceived. Yeah. Because, you know, the guy doesn't say, you can understand why the guy doesn't say. Yeah. But you can, you know, you can see why the woman would be angry. Yeah. But then you went immediately to feeling bad. Yeah. Feeling sorry. Well, I think I'm also older. I think you know, 20, 30 years ago, I would have had a very different reaction. Could well be. But what I want to mention about this other couple that was just fascinating was the wife was so loving and supportive mm. and filed for divorce. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, that I really like noting that, speaking of yeah. complications. And he didn't want a divorce. It's like, you know, he was he was very sad about her wanting a divorce. Yeah. But that was what I found so so deeply moving about this yeah. couple. They had such love for each other. Mm-hmm. She so wanted him to to have what he wanted and what he needed. Mm-hmm. She did not want to deprive him of that. She didn't think there was anything morally wrong with it. She even understood his not telling her about that early right. on. It was obvious. It's like, oh my God, it's not surprising why somebody would hide that. It's, it subjects you to... But she didn't want to be married yeah. to somebody like that. But that was the point. She yeah. didn't want to be married to a man who felt like he needed to dress like a woman. Yeah. Because that it was that was about her own sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. Her sexual orientation. And, then, you know, I can relate to that. If you suddenly wanted to become a man, mm-hmm. I... I would love you as a person, but I couldn't stay married to you because that's uh, my sexual what orientation. What if I just was. wanted to dress like a man? Well, you know, with isn't that interesting? It's very it's complicated, isn't it? It's, it's so different with women. Women can dress like, can quote unquote dress like a man and do it in a way that projects femininity. Yeah. Uh, so, think Marlena Dietrich. And think Marlena. Exactly. <laughs> isn't that interesting? And, you know, men in drag. Yeah. Are not uh, often men in drag. Well, often men in drag are gay, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, drag queens tend to be gay, but often men who cross dress are very much heterosexual, not interested in transitioning, just enjoy. And look, that's the other thing. Of course, I learned the longer I do this, um, whatever reasons I think of aren't the only ones. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you have to ask the individuals involved. They, yeah. you know, and they can't always tell for right. sure. And everybody's Sometimes. Different. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's a sexual turn on. It's sort of a fetish thing. Sometimes it's just it's just fun. It's just performance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You certainly see that with you know comedy sort of drag mm-hmm. um, type stuff. It's just fun. Yeah. Or you know RuPaul saying you know whatever you show up and that's your drag. You know uh-huh. he's just talking and RuPaul does use male uh, yes male pronouns, and and he just says. He's just projecting joy. Yeah. He's just saying, do your thing. Yeah. You know, it's fun. If your yeah. thing is to put on this kind of clothing, then do it and love it, you know, and own it. You know? Yeah. That's what, yeah. It's, and that's why he's so popular. That's too. why he's so popular. And not only among gay people. You know no, what I mean? not only among no, gay people. No, he's popular because he's joyous. He's just projecting joy. So anyway, all, all of this stuff involves, it's, it's difficult. It's complicated. I just want to note, you know, in terms of Terry, I just uh, want to, say my heart goes goes out to Terry because yeah and again particularly not not only does Terry have to deal with this difficulty of you know 
doing something that, particularly with respect to transition, which is so fraught still with you know the potential for for being abused in various ways. Absolutely. But of course, it also tends to mess up a uh, you know a relationship with somebody with a cisgendered woman who's heterosexual and doesn't want her partner to seem other than yeah. masculine. Yeah. So it is. It's really difficult. Uh, but I do, I do really appreciate uh, Terry's comment because you know I do have to point out the obvious. Terry has their own expertise with mm -hmm. respect to their own situation. Now, obviously, I don't, mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, you know what, what all of this calls for is understanding what. I, and look, what I claim in terms of the seven words, it calls for faith. Yes. So you don't panic about it. So you yeah. can actually be kind. And kindness doesn't mean you don't divorce. That's the interesting right. thing. And Terry pointed that out as well. If the wife can't, if the wife can't try to understand and accept, then move on and end the relationship. That's a that's a sad. It is thing, sad. But it, that's exactly what that couple I mentioned. Right. Did. I mean, what's the point of staying in a relationship if you're just going to get angry and demean your partner and expect him to change? Of course. Yeah. Of that's course. Not yeah, happen. That doesn't work. Yeah. So let's move on to the. We don't have we don't have like other other listener comments here on the other ones, but. Actually, I probably could have dug up some, particularly about the husband complaining about cleaning. But let's talk about the the you other sure two. Sure, you want to make this all in uh, one? Yeah, we we've got more time. We, we're we're good. Okay. We're, yeah. <laughs> so and we, well, we can be briefer about these other things. Okay. Husband so lost husband his job. Husband lost his job. Yeah. Okay. So what what was the situation there? Well, it's it's the the searches. I'm I'm sure there there's a variety of different things. I don't know exactly what people are searching for. I'm just saying that's what people end up, you know. So Coming did he? Well, is, is did he not tell the partner for like months that went by? I, I have or? heard that story. I'm guessing though a lot of these people who are searching mm -hmm. are not searching because he didn't tell her. They're searching because he keeps losing his job uh -huh. and he's unreliable, and uh -huh. she keeps thinking, "How can I count on this partner to help me support a family?" Mm -hmm. And you know, what do I do about this? That's so. I'm it's guessing not the first time that. he lost his job. Again, I'm guessing that, uh -huh. you know, that's probably true. Wouldn't would you think? Well, I thought maybe just because, I, I don't know if he, he's not working or maybe he's lying around the house while she's out mm -hmm. working and he's not doing any housework or helping. That's a story I hear. House. I have heard the story about the one where he keeps going out as if he had a job and uh -huh. she finds out months later he didn't. Right. There was, wasn't there one in the, um, in the New York Times uh, advice column? Yeah. There was one about a guy who didn't need to work right and didn't want to tell his wife he wasn't working right he, was, he had, he a, had trust a trust fund, fund. yeah and he, had, he had plenty <laughs> of money so he would go out every day as if he were working and never told her that he didn't really have a job right. he was just because he, he also yeah. had a, an office in the house yeah so he said he was a consultant and she <laughs> didn't tell her what he was consulting <laughs> okay there's that you know, it doesn't sound like she's writing for advice. I don't know. But, no, I, I think that a lot of this, bringing it back around to what we were saying, a lot of this is the situation where I don't know how to talk to him about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And what that requires is... That chair is sinking. Uh, yes. Come back up. Come back up. There you are. What that requires is the ability to talk about it, which, of course, is the sort of thing that couples therapy can be very good for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let's revisit our old friend. Why don't you hold up the book, huh? You know, I wrote a book. On yes, this, you did. A booklet on this topic. The whole topic. My husband complains about my cleaning. What do I do? Yeah. And Hint, it's not about the cleaning. Exactly. And look, I, I wrote the book because I keep getting these searches. And I think it was the very first listener question we ever got. I think it was. And so there was, go back, go way back to, <laughs> I don't know if it wasn't episode one, but it was one of our early episodes when we started taking listener questions. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was episode one. I don't know. And... That phenomenon where, you know, the guy keeps complaining about her cleaning and there's a variety of ways of, of uh, approaching this, which we've talked about in actually in some other podcasts, but all of them have in common that they need to be able to talk, say what they want, say what they like, say what they don't like, and tolerate the anxiety of possibly disagreeing mm -hmm. in a way that is both assertive and respectful. Yeah. And you can't do that when you're in a panic. And a lot of times what happens is people get very defensive. Mm -hmm. People will get very, um, well, when you get defensive, they tend to get nasty. Yeah. And sure. it tends not to go anyplace. Well, you know, it, it, it goes so deep, mm -hmm. you know, they go so deep. So 
I think we've we've covered there. I think we <laughs> covered have. our topics as well. We we uh, I should probably uh, for publicizing this episode retitle it to talk about. Okay, you know Chalmers getting himself in trouble now. <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait and see what happens. Don't with this. cancel him. Come on. <laughs> well, you know it's it is so fascinating that like. Well, let me rant a little bit about the Go whole ahead. cancellation thing. Yeah, oh, because, don't get me started. Yeah, no, the whole because cancellation is a, is essentially McCarthyist, mm-hmm. and it's coming often from the people who are doing it are thinking they're doing it from a loving or a supportive perspective of people who have been oppressed, mm-hmm. which that's where it starts from often. Yeah, and I can sympathize with that. It generally doesn't end up well because, indeed, there are some people who get "quote unquote" canceled. Who, (laughs) my gut says, yeah, cancel them. They're really horrible people. You know, mostly it's not that. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's people who did something a little bit iffy, regretted it, said they're sorry, and then they're canceled because that means they're a horrible person because they had misunderstood something or didn't or learn something new god forbid you should uh, you should yeah. experience something realize you feel bad about it learn something new and move on no that's not permissible you have to already have known things yeah. oh the, we were we were rereading uh we I was a, in a group of folks who happened to be rereading a book i've mentioned several times in several of our episodes recently victor frankel's book mm-hmm. um you know, a man's search for meaning. Even the title, man's search for meaning. You know, nobody would name it man's search for meaning right, anymore. Right, you couldn't do that anymore. And, and so, several people so in the group let's cancel Frankel because he called it. You know, they, they weren't they weren't canceling him. But but all of the discussion initially was all about how hard it was to read his language because it would say things like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there thinking, no, it wasn't. I'm old enough to remember when that's how everybody wrote. Mm-hmm. Everybody, probably not. Almost everybody wrote that way, Mm -hmm. and nobody misunderstood it. And then feminist consciousness came along and said, yeah, there's reasons that this ought to be questioned, which, oh, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean what was written has to be suddenly apologized for 17 times before you can actually understand it. I just find that so tiresome. There's an element there of closed-mindedness that Mm -hmm. just gets to me. And, they're, and the way that you're talking, they would say you're the closed-minded one. They would, of course. They, well, no, I don't think they would, actually. No, I don't think they uh, would. They, I, would say I'm, they wouldn't say I'm closed-minded. They would cancel me because they'd say I'm... It's not that, I don't think they'd be closed-minded. They'd say I'm wrong. They would say I'm wrong and evil. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't say I'm closed-minded. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you have to close your mind to certain things. You're not allowed to open your mind to certain things. You know, and it's like, yes, I am. <laughs> That's one of the advantages. Look... One of the advantages of not being famous is that being canceled doesn't amount to anything. <laughs> I'm not I'm not enough to be canceled. I don't think I said anything in this uh, episode that would warrant cancellation, but God knows it almost who knows who knows you know. Anyway, uh, I do invite comment if anybody actually is hearing this and feels moved to comment. I would love to hear. Uh, we comments. always love hearing from our viewers and listeners. So if you would like to uh, express yourself to us. Um, you can go to our website, ctin7.com. That's CT as in couples therapy in numeral 7.com. And uh, if those of you who are watching this, there's a QR code. i got to put in a plug for my QR codes. Yes, you, know. you do. There's a QR code. You can scan it, and it'll go right to ctin7.com. Mm-hmm. How clever is that? Uh, and when you do that, uh, yeah, you can easily send us messages. You can also get a hold of our merch. You can also have links to our books. Mm-hmm. I will put a link on there for the presentations that we mm-hmm. mentioned early on in this podcast. And you can also get a link to good old Laria, Laria Zilber's wonderful book, The Blue Tent, Erotic Tales from the Bible, mm. which is um, a lot of fun to read by yourself or with a partner. Or, with, or, two, or, or, or several or partners three. if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> right. The book certainly is. <laughs> Probably not a good thing to do at your, um, you know, at your local, um, you know, um, library uh, tot read. Uh, you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. It's definitely for read. adults. It's, yes, a, it's an adult adults book. only. Absolutely. Uh, and so until next time. Remember, be kind. Don't panic. And have faith. Mm-hmm.